Hello, my name's Harriet Hiscock. I'm a paediatrician at the Royal Children's Hospital and researcher at the Murdoch Children's Research Institute. Sleep problems are really common in babies and young children. They typically include problems getting off to sleep at the start of the night, problems waking up overnight and early morning waking when the children want to get up before 6am to start their day. Problems at the start of the night include difficulties going off to sleep without a certain person or an object being there. For example, the baby might be rocked or fed to sleep or need mum lying next to them to fall asleep. And they cannot do this without that happening. The other problem we commonly see is limit setting disorder, particularly in toddlers. These are when toddlers come in and out of the bedroom and test your limits in parenting. They tell you they want another drink or they want to go to the toilet or they want to tell you something and it may be one whole hour before they actually fall asleep. But before we can start to help improve sleep problems in children, we just need to understand a little bit about normal sleep and why kids wake or won't go to sleep. We all start off the night awake. We then go through a period of light sleep before we go into deep sleep. And typically we'll stay in deep sleep for two to three hours before we come up into our light sleep phase again. We then might wake up temporarily and go back into deep sleep. And we keep cycling like this throughout the night through deep and light sleep until we wake up in the morning. In children, those sleep cycles last between 20 and 50 minutes, and in adults, they last 90 minutes. What is crucial is the way we go to sleep at the start of the night. If a baby is rocked or fed or driven around the block to get to sleep, when they wake up from their deep sleep and come into light sleep a few hours later, they're going to be want to be rocked or fed or driven around the block again. It's a bit like this for us as adults. You may go to sleep with a pillow under your head. If I came in during your deep sleep and took your pillow away, you would come up into light sleep and you would not go back to sleep until you found your pillow, put it under your head and off you'd go again. How much sleep is normal is another really important thing to look at. This slide shows some information from 8,000 Australian children about how much sleep they're having by their age group. Along the horizontal axis, we've got age and years from one to nine. And on the vertical axis, we've got a, the amount of sleep in hours that a child on average has per 24 hours. So if you look at a baby age one, the average amount of sleep per 24 hours is 14 hours, but it can be as high as 18 hours or as little as 10 hours. So how much sleep your baby or toddler should have really depends on them. If they're happy and awake, they're having enough sleep. If they're awake and grumpy, they may need more sleep. One of the most important things about managing sleep problems in babies and toddlers is to make sure you have a good sleep routine. And this is also known as sleep hygiene. Try and have your baby or toddler go to bed around the same time each night within half an hour or so. Make sure you wake them up in the morning at a similar time. If you let your toddler sleep in too long, it may be really hard for them to go to sleep the next night. Make sure the bedroom is media free, no computers, no smartphones or things that might distract them. And have a good bedtime routine, but make sure it's not too long. I've seen toddlers with 45 minute bedtime routines who actually get hyped up by the routine rather than calmed by it. Try and keep your bedtime routine to maybe 15 minutes of stories and singing. And finally, make sure that there's no caffeine consumption after 3 p.m., particularly for the older children. So that means no tea, no coffee, no Coke, and no Milo. The next step is to recognise when your baby or toddler may be tired and settle them in a consistent way each night. Tired babies will often frown. They may clench their fists and jerk their limbs and they start grizzling. Crying is often a late sign and by this time they may be overtired. Toddlers may do these things. They also might yawn, lose interest in their toys or grizzle or tantrum. These can all be tired signs and it's time to take them off to their room. As a rough guide, a baby aged five to six weeks will be tired after an hour and a half, and a baby aged three months will be tired after around two hours. Once you've taken your baby into their room, you need to wrap them if you are going to wrap and cuddle them until they're quiet but not asleep. Make sure you put them into their cot awake. They can be drowsy, but if you rock them to sleep, remember they're going to want to be rocked back to sleep in the middle of the night. If your baby is quiet or grizzling, you can leave the room. 
If they're crying, stay with them. You can either stroke their forehead or pat them quietly and gently on their chest, not at your heartbeat rate, but a quiet, slow heartbeat rate. And do this until they're quiet, but not asleep. You can then leave the bedroom. If they cry, wait a couple of minutes before you go back in to see if they can resettle themselves. You may need to go in and out of your baby's bedroom several times before they finally learn to fall asleep. Don't leave it for longer than two minutes in a baby under six months as they can get more upset rather than settled. For babies over six months of age, you can choose to stretch these intervals that you stay out of their bedroom before coming back in. Managing sleep problems in toddlers gets a little bit more complex, but remember a good bedtime routine and consistency are still key. If you have a toddler who needs you to be there when you fall asleep at the start of the night, then there's a couple of things that you can try. One is called camping out. What this means is you put a camp bed or a chair right next to your toddler's bed. For the first few nights you pat your toddler off to sleep. Once they're asleep you can leave the room. The next few nights when your toddler is comfortable with this you can sit next to them but you don't touch them. You can talk to them or shh them off to sleep or sing quietly. After a few nights when your toddler is used to going to sleep without you touching them you can start to move your camp bed or chair a foot away from your toddler's bed. Eventually, over a period of one to three weeks, you can move yourself completely out of your toddler's bedroom. When they wake overnight, you need to try and do the same thing. The second method is called the checking method. This is when you take your toddler into bed, give them a kiss goodnight, and tell them you'll be back in a couple of minutes to check on them. You then leave the bedroom. Make sure you do go back within a couple of minutes, but make your visit brief. A kiss, I love you, goodnight, and leave. You keep coming back to check on them and eventually you'll find that they fall asleep. You can extend these intervals so you may check on them at 2 minutes, 4 minutes, 6 minutes and 8 minutes. Whatever you choose is fine, it's up to you. If they come to the doorway or come out of the bedroom, you need to take them back into their room. Some parents find that putting a small safety gate across their bedroom door stops their toddler coming out. Remember to reward your toddler in the morning for trying to go to sleep in their own bedroom. A reward could be a sticker or a stamp. Keep it simple and don't use food. The third method that we use is called a bedtime pass method. This is really good for the kids who keep coming out of the room wanting to tell you to something, wanting to have a drink or wanting to go to the toilet, what we call curtain calls. Sit down with your toddler and make a bedtime pass out. Make it fun and colourful. Then they can use this at the start of the night to come out of their bedroom once for whatever reason they want to do and give you that pass. Then there's no more pass outs to the morning. Remember to reward your toddler in the morning for being able to use the pass out and stay in the bedroom after their one visit out of it. For all babies and toddlers, we can sometimes see what we call an extinction burst. This is a burst of the behaviour you are trying to extinguish and it tends to happen two to three weeks down the track. So your toddler or baby who's now sleeping well at night suddenly starts waking up again and you can't work out why. They're not sick, they're not unwell, they just seem to have gone back to square one. This is a really common thing that affects about 20 to 30% of babies and toddlers. What you need to do is go back to your settling strategy and after two or three nights you'll find that they sleep through again. This next slide looks at some internet based resources that you can use for further information and help with managing your baby or toddler's sleep problem. Good luck.